Thank you, Ross and Crystal. Future Church's Christine Shank Award for Young Catholic Leaders is given to a young Roman Catholic who has demonstrated promising leadership in advancing Future Church's Vatican II mission in one or more areas of social justice, pastoral care, ministry, advocacy, teaching, researching, or publishing. This year, Future Church is pleased to honor Ms. June Yen Trujillo, Esquire for her ministry with LGBTQ plus Catholics. Ms. Trujillo has a long history of reaching out to the marginalized. She is a Catholic lay minister, a faith-based community organizer, and an immigration attorney. As a lay minister, she has served in young adult ministry for more than 15 years and is one of the leading advocates for inclusive Catholic LGBT ministry in the United States. Ms. Trujillo is a regular speaker at the yearly Los Angeles Religious Education Congress, which draws more than 30,000 attendees from all over the world, where she teaches about inclusive LGBT ministry. As a community organizer, she's worked with LA Voice PICO, a faith-based, uh, multi-faith, multi-racial organization that works to create a society that reflects the dignity of all persons working on issues such as immigrant rights, education, and criminal justice reform. She is also the founder of the Instagram at LGBT Catholics, an online platform of resources for Catholic LGBT ministry. And she is the religious formation coordinator in Spanish for the Catholic ministry with lesbian and gay persons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. She is author of the new book, LGBT Catholics, a guide for inclusive ministry that's published by Paulus Press this year, 2022. And Ms. Trujillo writes in her book, as a lay minister, I've heard hundreds of heartbreaking stories involving LGBTQ persons. These heartbreaking stories include stories of family and community rejection, violence, bullying, suicide attempts, depression, abuse, and discrimination in the workplace, homelessness, and poverty. But there's nothing more heartbreaking than realizing that many of these painful stories start with a history of rejection by a church minister, lay or ordained, a family member heavily involved in the church, or any other person who claims to speak on behalf of God. These stories damage what is most pure in the human being, the soul, and the desire for closeness with God. Her response to this heart-rending need was to found the Instagram account at LGBT Catholics to reach out to Catholics in spaces they inhabit. She also wrote an extraordinary guide that any parish could use to develop outreach ministries to LGBT Catholics. Sister Janine Gramick, a pioneer in ministry to the LGBTQ plus community, commends Ms. Trujillo's work and book. Gramic notes that the question often asked of those who have been demonized or rejected by the church is why stay in the Catholic Church? And it continues to be asked today by LGBTQ Catholics and is at the center of Ms. Trujillo's book. Tonight, as we honor Ms. Trujillo with the Christine Shank Award, we have asked Sister Janine Gramic to offer a few words about what her ministry and work means for the church today. I'm honored now to turn things over to Sister Janine Gramick. Well, let me say that when I think of my decades in LGBTQ ministry, I think of holy ground. Yahweh told Moses to remove his shoes because he was standing on holy ground. This is what meeting LGBTQ people has meant for me, taking off my shoes because I was on holy ground. When I began this ministry, there was silence in the church about LGBTQ people. And I soon learned that silence is violence. 
because silence denies the existence of a whole category of people. And if I do not name or recognize your existence, then I do not need to recognize your rights as a human being. But we know there have been significant changes in the Catholic community toward LGBTQ people. And why? Because LGBTQ Catholics did not remain silent. They did not remain silent. They came out and they demanded that their lives be acknowledged and that their rights be respected. So that was one change that I have seen, this coming out and speaking out because silence is violence. And the second change that I have seen is in the way that we view church teaching. I think sexual ethics has always been so, in the past, so very important in the church. But now I think we rightly see that sexual ethics is secondary to social ethics. It's the social teaching of the church that is primary. Jesus was more concerned about how people treated each other than he was about any sexual rules. He has never spoken about LGBT people. He had never uh, spoken hardly ever about sex. The only sexual illusion we have, we have is to divorce. But at any rate, most U.S. Catholics today have embraced the social teaching of the church. We've begun to appreciate that LGBTQ people are good human beings just the way they are. And so we are here now to honor a woman who has made significant contributions to our church by breaking the silence about LGBTQ people and by reminding us about Jesus' social teaching of love. Jun Wen Trujillo breaks that silence in her book. And I commend that I commend all of you to read that book. It is, it is absolutely beautiful. LGBT Catholics, a guide to inclusive ministry. It's not, it's, it's not only for parishes, it's for every one of us. June Wen breaks the silence as she speaks around the country about the goodness of LGBTQ persons. And she breaks this silence when she writes, as she recently did. I, I read this piece that she had written and she's written for the New Ways Ministry blog, I'm very proud to say. But she wrote, the time when LGBTQ Catholics had to leave the church in order to be safe or to not make others feel uncomfortable, that time is over. This is our rightful home in the church and we are here to stay. I've been struck that in her book, in her writings, such as the one I just quoted, in her public presentations, when she speaks, she always speaks from a spirituality of love. Jesus' main teaching, the teaching of love. She always returns to that fundamental message of our faith, show respect, compassion and love for all human beings, including LGBTQ people. Our Catholic community has truly been blessed by the presence of Jun Wen among us. And we are blessed now to have Jun Wen Trujillo with us as she receives this Christine Schenck Award for Young Catholic Leaders. June Wen has shown us that when an LGBTQ person comes into our lives, then we should take off our shoes 
because we are standing on holy ground. And so it is our privilege to stand on that holy ground now with June Wen Trujillo. Thank you so much, Sister Janine. <laughs> You're going to make me cry. <laughs> Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, first of all, Sister, for all of the work, everything that you've done. Um, I'm truly honored to be here um, with all of you. I know all of you have done amazing work in different areas of um, ministry. Um, and so it's it's truly an honor. So thank you so much. Um, and I guess, uh, let's see, what can I share with you today? Okay, so my name is Junon Trujillo. I am an LGBTQ Catholic. Um, I came out um, as gay when I was 17 years old. Then I went back into the closet for 10 years. And then um, I came out again in 2014. So my journey was a little bit rocky. I wasn't like one of those uh, uh, LGBTQ people who are super sure about um, you know, who they are from the beginning. I was actually sure about who I was, but I wasn't sure about God's love for me. Um, and that's why I went back into the closet. So, but that's already in the past. Um, the second time I came out was actually harder than the first time. Um, and it was harder because at that point, um, my entire network was, and, and my friends, everyone was either Catholic or religious. Um, and so the, the realization that made me really not know what to do in terms of whether I should stay in the church or leave was the fact that after that 10 year journey, I had concluded that my vocation was not to be single for a lifetime, but that my vocation was to be with someone for, you know, in a lifelong relationship. And so one of the questions that I had when I came out was, uh, is there a place in the church for me? Um, and it was really a hard time. Uh, it was a dark time. <laughs> and I was thinking of leaving the church. I found this group. Uh, it's a support group for parents of LGBTQ Catholics. Um, and they welcomed me at the meetings and they told me, uh, Junwen, we want you to stay and we want you to help us do this work. Um, and so I would be lying to you if I didn't say that I constantly think about um, whether I should stay or I should go, kind of like that song, should I stay or should I go? And I'm sure many of you have thought about that at some point in your in your journey, your spiritual journey. Um, we're probably already on the other side where we know we're probably going to be here forever. So, <laughs> uh, so now we're trying to do whatever we can to make this church um, a less emotionally toxic, a more healthy space for vulnerable communities. Um, and so that's a little bit about myself. Um, and one thing that I realized once I decided to stay is that I already had certain networks that I could use to create spaces of religious formation around this topic. Um, and so I was going to try to do whatever little bit I could, but the truth is that I knew I couldn't do it uh, on my own, right? It takes a village, but it's more than that. It's never about one person. Um, it, as a faith-based community organizer, I know that uh, we are here to create new leaders and we are here to create resources and to give uh, tools to new generations who can continue uh, this work. And so uh, the truth also is that uh, change doesn't come from the top, right? Uh, usually what happens is it, it happens at the grassroots level, the church, the people are way ahead, and then the institutional church is trying to catch up, right? So we're trying to help the institutional church catch up, and of course, any change that comes from the top is welcome, um, but I've learned not to rely on it, <laughs> because they're just doing, uh, you know, catch up work. 
And so that's why I decided to write the book that I wrote, um, LGBTQ Catholics, A Guide to Inclusive Ministry. It does have that extra Q that's been problematic. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, if you just add the Q, there it is. Um, and so this book is a it's intended to be a very simple guide, an easy to read guide um, that any Catholic can pick up. And it basically has, I think it has six chapters. It, it, it originally had five, now it has six, but uh, the end result was six chapters. But the first chapter, in the first chapter, um, I try to create awareness of the need for inclusive LGBTQ ministry. So one of the things that we hear often um, in the church is gay people are no longer vulnerable. LGBTQ people are no longer vulnerable. And we hear this, um, I call it the Hollywood stereotype, right? wealthy uh, white men are gay, that, like that's all LGBTQ Catholics are. And the truth is that LGBTQ Catholics come from, first of all, there's women who are LGBTQ, and we come from all demographics or all socioeconomic uh, uh, different classes. And so I was trying to create awareness as to that need, but also as to the need of parents of LGBTQ Catholics. And so one reality uh, that the church is living is that more and more catechists, more and more Eucharistic ministers are finding themselves in a difficult place where they love the church, but they also have a loved one who has just come out and they're trying to choose between one or the other. And that shouldn't happen, right? And so when we talk about the need of LGBTQ ministry, inclusive LGBTQ ministry, we're talking about also ministry for and with parents. Um, and so that is the first chapter. The second chapter, I try to define some uh, common uh, terms and address some myths. And so if someone's trying to start a ministry, what's going to happen is they might have some people in the community saying, but you can't do this because of some myth. And so as an attorney, I'm trying to say, well, we need to first define some terms and have common definitions, because as long as we don't have the same definition, we're always going to argue about something. But if we can come to a, 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 a definition that we both agree on and get rid of the stereotypes, then we can dialogue. So that's chapter two. Chapter three, it's basically a, a step, a five step guide on how to create um, an LGBTQ ministry at the parish level and a little bit of information about other levels of ministry as well. Chapter five, four, chapter four is the one that I didn't know if I should include because I didn't want doors to be closed. Uh, fortunately, they were not, uh, but it's a chapter on doctrine. And so what are some basics of doctrine? Uh, but I focused specifically, as Sister Janine mentioned, on some principles of doctrine that um, we don't hear a lot when we talk about LGBTQ Catholics, such as the dignity of the human person. Uh, how does this apply to LGBTQ Catholics? Uh, principles of anti-discrimination, the right to work, et cetera, et cetera. And even on parts of doctrine that we, we do hear about, such as chastity, um, how is this teaching sometimes misunderstood or discriminatorily applied? Um, I also included a section on the Bible, um, but um, more than anything, I made an invitation for biblical scholars to start a dialogue around um, the Bible and the verses that are usually used against LGBTQ people. And there was another chapter on um, principles of pastoral care. And then the last chapter, which is what I want to leave you with, is basically... Uh, where I let the readers know that as many answers as I tried to gather in this guide, uh, we're still a journeying church. So there's still a lot of things that we are discerning as a church and that each reader, each person, each Catholic has to go through that journey of discernment. Um, and this is not, this doesn't just apply to LGBTQ Catholics, this applies to any uh, any change that we that we want to make happen, right? We have to discern uh, what's the best way to make it happen. But when it comes to LGBTQ Catholics, we do need to listen to the lived experiences um, of LGBTQ Catholics, um, of women as well, um, and in order for us to know how to move forward. And so that's a little bit of the summary of the book. 
But um, what I want to leave you with is this. We are a church on a journey. And because we're on in that journey, all we can do is hope that change is already happening. And we know it is happening, but we can only hope that it will fully happen, right? And we can only create new leaders. We can, can only create resources. Um, we know that hope is what fuels our work. We know that the work all of you are doing at Future Church is uh, essential, it's prophetic, um, and it is the work of the Holy Spirit. And so I want to thank Future Church. I want to thank everyone here for the work that you do in your ministries to create a church that is uh, more welcoming, more inclusive, uh, and more like Jesus. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for this award. Thank you. Thank you so much, June Wen, and congratulations. We're, it, we're really honored to, to, to be able to give this to you. And thank you, uh, Sister Janine, for being here and for sharing a little bit about what um, June Wen's work means to you as a, certainly as a pioneer in this movement.